Are you aware of what administrators are doing in your infrastructure? What commands are they running on switches and routers? What if you have certain contractors and you only want them to run certain commands? Are you able to do that? If you have device administration within Cisco Identity Services Engine, you can. TACAX Plus. Sometimes some organizations use RADIUS, but RADIUS is best for user connectivity, for user authentication, for user access. To manage the devices, TACAX Plus works well, and it's a bit more secure than RADIUS. So let's spend some time taking a look at that configuration today with Cisco Identity Services Engine and Device Administration. Let's get device administration up and running in the deployment. Now, device administration is a separate license. You would make sure that all of your PSNs are enabled for device administration. Let's go to device administration and we'll go to deployment. We'll see here, I have a standalone deployment. Let's click on that and we'll scroll down and we see that enable device admin service that has been checked. You would check that box for your PSNs, but keep in mind that is a separate license to set up TACAX Plus device administration. So now we'll go over to work centers. And if you're familiar with the videos I've been recording, I've said it before, the work centers is an easy way to set up the tasks that you're looking to set up within your environment. In this situation, I'm looking for device administration. And as you can see, there's a work center for device admin. Let's click on overview. And this gives you pretty much the flow of what you need to follow to set up device administration in your environment. The first thing I want to do is click on profiles. We'll see here that there are some out-of-the-box profiles that do come with ICE, but I did create this profile here just to have a separate profile, full access shell. Let's click that. What does that look like? You see here that my default privilege when this is assigned is privilege 15, the highest privilege that I can assign. You might be asking yourself, like, are you giving that to read-only users? What are you doing there? Yes because I don't want people messing around with the enable password. I'm just giving shell access privilege 15, but I'm controlling what commands they're able to send over to the switch, the router, whatever it is that they're authenticating to. Um, so let's switch over to command sets because that's really where I'm making the difference with whoever's logging in. And you'll see here, I have two command sets, uh, the deny all commands that's out of the box, but the full admin command set, let's check that one out. And we'll see that this is to allow it all. Permit any command that is not listed below. That is checked. And what is listed below? Nothing. So I can run everything. If I assign this command set to an administrator, they should be able to run it all. Let's go back. And we'll take a look at this read-only help desk, the HD. We'll check that. We'll click Edit. And we'll see that this is read-only support. And here I am listing a couple of the commands that, that I want folks to run. I want them to exit and I want them to just run show commands. So if you're assigned this read-only HD, you should really only be able to do show commands. You're not making changes to any of the, the devices. Let's click cancel. Now let's go over to the policy set. Now this is a separate policy set. We'll go back to work centers and we'll see device admin policy sets. I'm using the default there. And the only thing I really changed under authentication is just the Active Directory group that I want to focus on. Under authorization, that is where the magic happens. So I have two different rules here. Uh, if you're in this admin's Active Directory group, you have the full admin command set. And if you're in this read-only group, you have the read-only command set. Uh, and of course, they both have full shell access. So now, Let's test things out. But first, we do need to apply some AAA configs to a switch. So authentication, authorization, and accounting, we're going to apply those commands to a switch. And just to test things out, we're going to use Cisco Modeling Labs. So as you can see here, we have a switch. We'll open up the console. And what I want to do is I want to dump some commands. So I have the shortcut here, and let's enable AAA, and we'll also toss in the ICE information. There we go. There's the lab password that I'm using, 
And now let's put everything in a group here. Now let's dump in the authentication, the authorization, and the accounting commands. I want to keep track of what people are doing. That's important. All right. So authentication, authorization, and accounting. We've set that up. And just in case something weird happens, we also have the local database to fall back to. And now what we're going to configure are the lines. And I want to set this up for SSH. So the lines that I have to connect to the switch. There we go. So I've pretty much configured everything. And of course, you would most likely in production have multiple PSNs. This is just a standalone environment here, but you would have most likely more PSNs just in case something happens. Having a backup is always important. Now that we've configured AAA, let's open up the CLI. And we'll want to connect to that switch. I'm using CLI Analyzer. If you haven't checked that out, it's definitely a useful tool. There we go. We have our IP from the switch. And I'm going to log in with the full administrator. That'll be the first thing I'll do. We'll connect. Let's connect. Switch has been added to CLI Analyzer. All right. CLI Analyzer is going to collect some information by default. And we are logged in. Let's just run a couple of commands here. All right. Big T and G103. Let's do a shot on that one. All right, so I can make some changes here. So you know what? Let's try now the, the help desk test account that I have. Let's do that. Yep. Let's connect again. This time I'll do hdesk, which is the account in Active Directory. Let's log in. There we go. So now I'm logging in with that test account, the test help desk account. Show IP at brief. All right, I can do some show commands, show version, perfect. All right, so now let's try to make some changes. Big T, command authorization failed, that's, that's what I want. Uh, you know what, let's reload this switch. Command authorization failed, perfect. Show logging. All right. So as you can see there, I've separated the access out for a full administrator and somebody who should have the less full admin rights, right? Read-only access. And those command sets that you saw there, you can pretty much add additional commands. So if you do want somebody to run specific configuration commands, you can work that into the command sets. Um, now, what does that look like really from a logging and reporting perspective? Let's go back to Identity Services Engine. We'll go over to Operations, and we'll see there that we have a separate live logs for TechX. There we go. So we have all the information. We can see that there was two commands that I did run that, that failed. Let's, let's take a look at that. Configure Terminal. That failed. Failed attempt, command authorization failed, command failed to match a permit rule. So all of that is logged. If we go back, let's go to our work centers and let's go to reports. We can also pull information from the reporting. If we go to reports, device administration reports, TACAX, command accounting, and we can see the information there at least of what's been successful, what, am I, what are my administrators running. I can see there that there was some configuration to, to port three, show logging, shutdown. So I can see all this information. It gives me a place that I can do some, some auditing. So this is great. For those that are interested, check out device administration with Cisco ICE. It gives you something else that you can do with Cisco ICE not just user authentication, but you can also manage the access that your administrators have to the infrastructure. There's a lot that you can do 
with Cisco Ice. I will see you on the next one.